Hey, my fellow traders, my homies, good to see you. I'm John Zadar, I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is the 14th of February. We're halfway through the month, exactly. This is Tuesday. Now, what we're gonna do as we always do, we're gonna focus in on some hot OTC and penny stocks. We're looking for stocks that have potential, right? We wanna make some money. So we're not looking at these rocket stocks that have had huge gains today. No, we're probably gonna be looking at stocks that look like they're ready to go, but haven't gone yet. So they could be slightly under the radar. Now, all the stocks we're looking at, they're all gonna be penny stocks. That means they're under $5. It's not about what market they're on, so we're gonna look at stocks on the OTC, but we're most likely gonna be looking at stocks on the major exchanges too. Now, when I do my research on an OTC stock, this is the bomb site here, folks. I'm not kidding you. I tell you this in every single video. This is the best site to use, and I'll tell you why. It's updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC. And I don't know of one other site on the entire internet that does that. Not for OTC. You can get it from Major Exchange. This is the only site I found that is updated every day with that important, relevant information. Share structure, filings, financials, the stuff we're always looking up. So quit running around the internet, frustrating yourself and wearing yourself out. Just come on over here, make it easy. It's not a perfect site, but you're gonna find most of what you want in one place. That does make things easier. All right, let's see how our OTC market finished today. Oh, bloody heck, <laughs> this better bump. That's all I got to say. Oh my God. Things are getting worse, folks. Things are literally getting worse. Our dollar volume is down to 1.1 billion. Share volume under 5 billion. We don't want to be under 10. And our trades, folks, this is becoming detrimental. We were stuck between 250 and 300,000 trades for, it's got to have been at least a half a year. And we came under 250 a couple times and always bounced right back up. We have been steadily getting further away from our floor of 250. We're digging a cellar, getting into a grave at this point. We're down to 210,000 trades. I had no clue it was that slow today. I could tell things were slow, but they're slow every day. That's incredibly slow. We're going to need a wee bit of a miracle to save our OTC market. Well, I have got some better things to look at than that. So come on with me and I'll share with you what I found. First stock we're taking a look at has got me really excited. This is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. This is ticker DCFC, Tritium DCFC Limited. This company is in a booming sector that has got growth potential for the next 10 years easily. What are they doing? They are putting out EV chargers the pumps that charge EV cars. They're going everywhere and these are already built. They are liquid cooled from the inside. They will run for 10 years virtually maintenance free. And here's the great thing about these pumps folks. They can go anywhere. They don't have to go on the corner of intersections like our gas stations. They can go wherever we park a car. At the malls, the movie theaters, Walmarts. Now think about that putting one of these at every parking spot in the parking lots of anywhere. Just think of Walmarts. How many parking places are there in one Walmarts? How many are there in all their Walmarts? And that is dead space. Parking lots don't make them any money. They've got to keep maintenance up on them. Here, they could make a ton of money. You're in the store for an hour, sure you're gonna plug your car in. So I think this business is gonna be huge. And they're working all over the world except for China. Now the company's had a lot of recent filings and news presses and it's all good. So DCFC finished the day at $1.50 with just about 6% gains. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Ooh, that's surprising. That's a considerable drop, as a matter of fact, from 4.2 million down to 1.6 million. Wow, maybe a buying opportunity? Share structure for the company. All right, outstanding isn't too bad. We got 153 million here, but I don't see any information about what the float is. 
Normally, if this was a pink, which is the only place I can find it in financials, I would go look. But this is a NASDAQ, and I'm not going to find it there. So I did do a search over here at Google using the company name, the ticker, and the words float and outstanding. I found using the word outstanding actually increases the odds of the word float coming up. I guess because they're always together. Well, this is what I found, and I'm looking for numbers that match. That's pretty much the only way I can go about it. I got 111 million, 56 million. Here's another 56 million. We may be onto something here. Oh, we got a bounce up to 80 million. Anything else here? Yeah, we got a bounce down to 19 million. Well, from 19 million to 111 million, and I can't find a whole lot more numbers here. So how is an investor to really know? I can't tell you. I would normally just pick the one that had the same number repeated. 56 million is probably what I'd report to you, but it could be anywhere from 19 million to 111 million. But this much I do know for a fact, it is under 153 million. That I do know. Financials for the company. All right, looky here. We've got some jumping going on. From 2020 to 2022, she has virtually doubled her revenues, going from 46 million to 56 million to 85 million. Yes, those are millions. We've got to add three zeros to any of the numbers that you see down here. Now, when I jump over into the quarterly, I don't get any information here. However, one of the filings we're going to look at does give us some more information. Looking at those disclosures. Ooh, we got a bunch of them here. All of these are from February and they're all the same. They're all SC13Gs. These are good news, real good news. Let me show you one. These are beneficiary ownership forms. When somebody purchases enough shares of the company, they qualify for ownership. So we've got a new investor here. Yarley, Varley Holdings, they have just purchased 14.8 million shares of the company's stock, which now makes them the proud owner of 9.5% of this company. And every single one of these 13 Gs are new investors coming into this company. People who are spending a lot of money. Why? Because they believe in the company. And why shouldn't they? We are just at the beginning of this EV explosion. The reason more EV cars aren't on the road is because there aren't enough EV chargers. Well, they're there to fix that problem. They're not working on it. They're doing it. Their chargers are already out there being used. These things can go everywhere, and we're probably going to start to see them everywhere. Now, as a matter of fact, I got a lot of information out of this 6K right here. Let's jump on into that. This will give us some highlights of what's occurred over 2022 and what we're looking at for the future. We're not going to go through it all. You know me. I just like to bullet things. So they start this whole thing off by telling us that Tritium announces largest customer order in company history and releases preliminary results for the year 2022 with record sales, revenue, and backlog. And just so you know, this covers up to the end of December last year. Now, the reason I say that is because we're going to be looking at news in January and February that just adds on to this big time. So they've got some highlights here. Let's take a look at them. First, they secured the largest order from a single customer in the company's history with a new order from BP Petroleum. That is the one on the New York Stock Exchange, ticker BP, for deployment across the United States, United Kingdom, Europe, and Australia. They achieved the largest monthly production output in company history just in December of 2022, with 50% more output than any previous month. Business is booming. Looking at their financials, they received record sales orders valued at $195 million in calendar year 2022. Achieved record revenues in the range of $95 to $102 million in 2022. Now, we were just looking at June of 2022, and they were up to $85 million. So, they are, in the next six months, they've added more money on. They're just getting bigger and bigger. Projects cash and cash equivalents of approximately $70 million at the end of December, and opens 2023 calendar year with a record order backlog of approximately $150 million in business they still got to get done. 
Their expected revenue for this year, 2023, is in excess of $200 million. Now they've got some more information down here. The global demand for tritium products continues to grow as evidenced by the latest order from BP, the company's largest order from a single customer in its history. Now I went diving around. I couldn't find the initial order from BP. I don't know how far back it was, but this is obviously their second order and it's the biggest ever. So obviously BP is happy. This is BP's second major order from the company, following an initial order announced alongside the BP multi-year global framework contract in April of 2022. Well, that's where I probably can find the information. The size of these orders is an indicator of ongoing growth in the demand for DC fast chargers in line with global EV uptake, alongside the accelerating deployment of EV chargers by many segments, including petroleum, convenience, retail, electricity, and fleet companies. Tritium has the benefit of almost 10 years of continuous operation in the field. Tritium estimates its position as number two in market share in universal DC fast charger category, excluding China. They're claiming that they have the second largest share of all the business in the world. Wonder who has the number one position. The company expects the volume of sales to continue to grow as customers move past pilot programs into accelerated rollouts of large global EV charging networks. With its Tennessee factory already delivering chargers, Tritium is well positioned to benefit from expected increases in demand for Buy America compliant EV fast chargers from later in 2023 through 2028. Driven by funding from the National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Formula Program and the Inflation Reduction Act. So they're actually getting help from the country. I've scrolled on down to this presentation, this brochure, if you will, that they have for the company. This is at the bottom of the 6K as well. Now they told us that they estimated they have the second largest market share for EV chargers. And they give us a lot of information here, but one of the pieces of information I found curious. They say that they have already sold up to December of 2022, 10,000 plus DC fast charger units. And that's not bad. Well, here at the beginning of the year, I'm gonna share with you, they just had a news press where they got a deal for 10,000 more units over a certain amount of time. So their business is exploding right now. They are working with lots of companies. They make them, other companies deploy them. All these names here, these are all different companies that deploy EV charging units. And any one of them you see with a green tick, is working with this company. So they got a lot of people who want to make money distributing these things for this company. Now, when you boil it all down, it's just this easy, folks. Australia, New Zealand, they have got 75% of the market share down there. They are ranked number one. In the US, they have 30% here. I had no clue, but then I don't have an EV vehicle, don't get out much. And again, they are ranked number one in the USA, which is pretty impressive. And Europe, this is a market they're still working in and they're working hard. Right now they have 12% of the market share and are only ranked three, only. Three is not a bad position. But as you're gonna see in the news, they're doing a lot over in Europe right now. Now this is good for any part of the world, folks. This can go in deserts, it can go in tundras, it can go up against the ocean with all the salt. These maintenance-free units run for about 10 years. So everybody is interested in these things because while well, they don't look ugly, they can be put anywhere and most important, individual business owners now can start making money. You don't have to own a gas station to make money by refueling vehicles, right? All right, let's go take a look at some of that news. Taking a look at their news. Well, they've got nothing here just for them. That is dedicated area for the company. But down here, you'll get a few pieces of news on the company and their competitors as well, which isn't a bad thing if you're into that sort of thing. So what I've done is I've grabbed the two most recent pieces of news and we'll take a look at those. This one came out January 23rd. Tritium a global leader in direct current fast chargers for electric vehicles, has executed an agreement with eVive, an EV charging network in the UK. 
Evive has informed Tritium that it plans to install 10,000 EV charging stations by 2030 with the goal of becoming the United Kingdom's largest charger network. Big dreams with a first mover advantage. Evive placed initial purchase order of 350 Tritium fast chargers as part of their plan to invest 25 million pound over the next two years for the chargers. That is one company one contract for $25 million over the next two years. Evive is currently building a customer network consisting of retail parks owned by regeneration business Peel l and and leading hospitality provider like Green King, the UK's leading pub retailer and brewer operating over 2,700 pubs, those are bars, restaurants and hotels across England, Wales and Scotland. Like I said, this is very attractive to your business owners. Why not make money on you inside and outside while you're visiting their establishment? It just makes sense. Their most current piece of news came out February 14th. Tritium will supply OK, Denmark's largest fuel retailer with over 300 fast chargers for use at fuel stations on highways and urban areas and retail sites and including OK's corporate fleet and fleet customers. OK currently owns more than 670 fuel stations in Denmark. Many of these fuel stations are co-located with co-op retail outlets. So the gas station attendants, they're definitely interested too. I mean, come on, seriously. We've got this conversion going from petroleum to electric. Well, as the conversion happens, you'd be losing business if you weren't offering electricity. So it just makes sense that these petroleum gas stations would start offering electric too. So as the conversion happens, they can be there getting all that business and phasing out with one and phasing in with the other. Let's go take a look at that chart. DCFC, and we're going to be doing all of our charting for this stock over here at Think or Swim. This is my free trading platform. You get it just for signing up with TD Ameritrade. So we're looking at a six-month, four-hour chart here. We got a brilliant high bubble, $10.35, and then a very traumatic fall, all the way down to a dollar here in December. And once that 200 got close, she started working it. She started getting up over it, up under it, because she was trying to get on top of it. Now yesterday, I wanted to show this to you, I just had other things going on, right? She was under the 200 yesterday, and she looked good to me then. Today, she looks better. She's on top of the 200, had a mighty blowout, and has fallen back, but is still above that 200. Our technicals look great. Our PPO has just had that crossover. <laughs> Pushing up right now. Your PPO, your percentage price oscillator, it's a lot like the MACD. You read them the same. I just like the PPO better. I think it does a better job, but I keep my MACD as well. MACD is also pushing up right now, and our RSI is up here at 58. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. Oh, what a drop. What a bounce. Started down here, jumped up to here to 229 from $1.50 and fell back and then crashed. Came under the 200, hit a low bubble here, has bounced off that low. And ever since that, she's negotiating. She says, I don't want to come back down. I'm going to find a way to stay up. And she's been working it real hard here. She's gotten up on top of her 50, on top of her 20, and now she's on top of her 9. She's pushing away from all of the SMAs. And look, our 200, our 50 day, they're all turning up right now. Everything is looking good. The only thing that doesn't look too great right now is our technicals at this very moment are pulling back because of the aftermarket activity. Five day, five minute. Whoa, we got lots of volatility in this stock. She is all over the place. Lots of bounces during the day. Going up over that 200, under it, over it, under it, over it. My God, this will be a tough stock to play on a day trade. I tell you what, she hit a low here of $1.03, got up on top of the 200, had that big drop here, but bounced up, and she is starting to climb now with all that volatility. Now, I do see our 200 has churned up. It looks great, but you see the way this is riding up and down over this 200. I wouldn't expect it to do anything different over here. So I would watch for this to come down over that 200 and then come back up. Because honestly, I think this stock is ready to start climbing and growing. 
not just bouncing and coming back down. I think it's going to start climbing. Why shouldn't it, folks? Everybody is going to be into EV cars in 10 years, and little businesses can make use of this. I mean, just think of the big businesses that can make use of this. If Walmart's honestly got in touch with this company and said, we want to outfit our parking lots everywhere, how many would that be? And how many stores are there? How many restaurants, bars, how many gas stations? They don't want to be out of the game either. So I think this is a huge business and they're already ranked number one, number two, and number three across the countries that they're working in, all of them but China. So yeah, I'm real excited about this company. I think money is going to be pouring in. I think the charts are going to steadily grow. Are they going to have volatility? Well, yeah, you can see volatility, but is it going to crash? No, their revenues are going to start growing tremendously, and that's going to give this stock value, and everybody's going to want to be a part of it. Hey, if you like sober, you're going to love DCFC. Next stock we're taking a look at, I found the same way I find all the stocks we're looking at, by looking at the charts first. I'm looking for a chart that has heat, that looks like it's ready to break out. Then I go looking for what I call lingering news. A news press or a filing that came out not too long ago, but projects an event in the near future so that we can get ahead of the game. Well, DVLP fits that bill. She hasn't got any new filings, but she had a news press come out a week ago that opened my eyes. I almost bypassed this company because I didn't like what I was seeing financially until I read the news. So DVLP, she finished today at 0 0.0042 with 12.5% loss. Now, they've got a description here, but it's really not as clear as it needs to be. What the company primarily does is they run an online pharmacy. They sell medicines online. And this last year, they have just been on the war path. They have made four acquisitions of other pharmaceutical companies, and they say they've got more that they are ready to take care of. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Nice! We got a jump here from 18.1 million to 21.3. Shame she fell with all that extra volume. Share structure for DVLP. All right, I tried to confirm this. I couldn't do it. Even though she's a pink, she's not using disclosures for her financials. You can normally find it in those. They're using 10Ks and 10Qs, and they don't put the float information in those. So I couldn't get it there. And looking over at Google, that information was all over the place. So I really don't know what's going on. What I am figuring, though, we got a real high float. They tell us here unrestricted is one3 billion shares. That is normally close to the float. Now they tell us back in September, the float was a half a billion. We can only hope and pray. Financials for the company. Well, this is where I almost passed this up. They show nothing annually and they show nothing quarterly. Well, I'm really not interested in companies that aren't making any money unless there's news that they're going to be making money, right? Disclosures for the company. Well, they've got nothing new since November. So let's take a look at that news. So we're looking at news that goes back to November of last year. Back in November, they said they were thinking about getting rid of 320 million shares. Well, here in January, they did that. They are gone. And it was also back in November that they told us they were continuing on with their acquisition strategy. They had already been doing it all year and they weren't about to let up. Then all of December, they were just getting the word out. They were on TV, podcasts, they were on Fox News, Bloomberg, doing interviews, just getting the word out about what they do. And then they had news come out a week ago. Let's take a look at this. This came out February 7th. Golden Developing Solutions announced December 2022 sales exceed $5.6 million. Well, we didn't see any financials, zero, 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 and now they've jumped to $5.6 million from zero. That caught my attention. The company is also expecting an additional bump in revenue of 35 to 40% upon completion of onboarding its largest customer. The company has achieved unaudited December 2022 sales of $5.6 million with the largest customer still to be onboarded. It also expects significant increase in revenues after the four previously announced acquisitions are fully transitioned. 
During this final process of transitioning and onboarding customers, we expect a brief dip in Q1 sales followed by a robust rebound and acceleration. After completed, the company will again begin to acquire more acquisitions in the specialty pharmacy market, which also will become another event that should further increase company revenues, helping it reach its 2023 goals. We are holding off closing several targeted additional acquisitions until we complete all the work necessary to close the other four acquisitions. But it looks like all that's about ready to happen anytime now and they'll be back on the warpath. But what really caught my attention is they went from zero to what? $5.6 million just like that. That's an eye opener. And they say they expect more revenues when their biggest customer comes on board. So yeah, I'm liking this company. That's what it's all about. Companies that are making money. And when you go from zero to the millions, you need to pay attention to that company. I think others will. Let's go take a look at this chart. This is DVLP, six month, four hour chart. We got a low back here of 002, and we have a high of about a penny and a half with a lot of volatility. Had some huge runs in here and some huge falls, but it looks like she is respecting that 200 for the most part until right here. Once she lost respect, she fell down hard. And she has been stuck down here, rolling across this floor. Looks like she was waiting for the 50-day SMA. She broke it here, but if she tried to jump up there, chances are she'd slip and fall, which is what she did. So once it got flatter and she could get even footing on it, she jumped up on top of that and then charged up to that 200-day SMA. Got right up underneath it and has fallen back. Now I want to show you that where it's at right now, the price is a strong resistance. I'm going to draw a line right there. See how these big jumps are landing right on top of that line, turning around there? This is right where everything is at. It needs to get on top of that 200 and on top of that resistance, and we could see some mighty runs like this again. Look at that volume, folks ton of volume. No problem with liquidity here. Technicals, not very strong. They're all cooling off right now. It's been a bad last two days. 20-day, one-hour view. So everything was falling. We got our 200 coming down here, and now it's just starting to pull up. She was on a low bubble here until she got over that 50. Argued with the 50. Once she got on top, argued with the 200. You can see they don't want to fall. They just stay around that bigger SMA until they can find the strength to run. Fell down to the 50 and jumped. And we've got, what, four days of running here. She hit a high at 0057 before she fell back to 0042. The last two days have taken their toll. She could come right back on down to that 50. Technicals, they're looking even weaker. But we got two days of dropping right now. Five day, five minute. All right, there's her low during this time period, double zero two five. That's not too far off of the double zero six months ago. She got up on top of the 200, got real excited about it, had herself a nice climb. Another jump here. Look, folks, I'm noticing a trend here. Early in the morning, early in the morning at the bell, we are seeing some big rips. Look at this, four days in a row. Get in as soon as the bell rings, ride it up, get out. When did this start falling? 10 o'clock in the morning. When did this one start falling? 10.15. And this one, 9.50. And how about that high bubble? That one there came in at 9.40. Folks, right around 10 o'clock, right around 10 o'clock, just before, just after, that's when she's hitting her high. You could get in early, ride her up, and then get out before she falls, because she does fall. Now, she had another jump here. There's no doubt about that. You may have been upset with my advice if you'd got in here and sold right there, and then she jumped again. But I'm just saying, it is a guaranteed, well, nothing's guaranteed, but you can see four out of four days she's been doing that. And even on her bad days, this was a fall day, she had a jump. This was a fall day. It's not as big as a jump, but there was some activity there. So I 
would definitely be watching this first thing in the morning. She has now come underneath her 200 day SMA, but she's had this strong poke, like last grab. You know, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. So I would presume she's going to try to come back up over this. I do like the fact that they're making money now. They just need now to get a filing out that says that. News presses are great, but we need to get it on the books. I need to go over to OTC and go to the financial page and see zero to 5.2 million. Whoa, that's exciting. And that's why we're looking at this company. I don't think everybody has noticed that yet. I can't explain why it's dropped. All I can say is it's a buying opportunity if this looks good to you. Now this company, we already looked at it on January 25th. She had had a jump on the 24th. We looked at it on the 25th and over the next four or five days she flew, giving us 150% gains before she fell. And now looks like she's ready to run again with a fresh catalyst sitting on the table. This is ticker VVPR, Vivo Power International. Finished the day at a very curious number, 666. We won't make any comments about that. But she did give us almost 17% gains today. Now looking at the description of the company, they tell us here that Vivo Power is an award-winning global sustainable energy solutions B corporation company focused on electric solutions for customized and ruggedized fleet applications, battery and microgrids, solar and critical power technology and services. The company's core purpose is to provide its customers with turnkey decarbonization solutions that enable them to move toward net zero carbon status. Now they do work with solar, they work with microgrids, but right now they're spending a lot of time in converting cars, gasoline cars to electric vehicles. Now they're not doing this for anybody or just any old car. They're working for companies converting their entire fleets or they're working for car manufacturers on a particular model. So what was the relative volume around Vivo today? Well, she is normally doing, oh, that's not it. Let's try again. <laughs> It happens to the best of us. Well, she lost about one third of her volume. She dropped from almost a million shares a day down to 612,000. Maybe a good time to look at it. Share structure for the company. Couldn't find this in the financials because it's a NASDAQ, so I had to go over to Google. Looks like it's roughly 12 million. I do believe that's accurate, but you can never tell coming from Google. But even if it's not, the most they can have is up to 21 million, which isn't a bad float at all. Financials for VVPR. All right, they have been making money over these last few years, though it's actually less now than it has been for the last four. They did $22 million and look, they only got to keep 259,000. You do $22.5 million and you get to keep a quarter million. Woo! Quarterly, what do they got? Well. Only from 2019, they got nothing here, which is why the news that came out today is important. And I'm gonna share that with you here in just a second. All right, looking at our filings, there's another one of those 13 Gs, right? Let's just take a quick dabble in there. All right, this is uh, Armistice Capital. They bought 1.9 million shares and they are now 7.7% owners in the company. That came out today. So you just had a new investor come in, buy enough shares that they actually qualify to become part ownership, which means they get to vote. They get to help steer this company. So it never hurts to do a little bit of due diligence on who just invested, see what sort of person or company they are. And then we got a 6K here. What's this 6K about? This came out yesterday. Uh, Viva Power press release. This is the press release that I want to share with you. So the company does have lots of news here, and of course, we're not gonna go through all of it, but they are doing lots of things with all of their divisions. But I wanna focus in on the most current news, the most recent, so I got three of them here. One came out November 14th. Vivo Power International is pleased to announce that the company and its wholly owned subsidiary, Tembo EV. Tembo is the division that works with converting cars. They have entered into a supply agreement with Evolution Group Holdings for the full electrification of its fleet of light utility vehicles for traffic management and fleet management. Tembo Australia will convert existing and new vehicles to full electric over the next five years. And to give you an idea of what size this group is, 
Evolution Group Holdings was founded in 2004, headquartered in Brisbane, Australia. The group is one of the largest non-government providers of road infrastructure services across Australia and New Zealand. The company has an extensive specialized fleet of over 500 vehicles for its traffic management and fleet management service. So there's a contract. They told you they were going to do all of them, used and new. So there's 500 right there. The next piece of news comes out January 13th. Tembo and Toyota Motor Corporation have now concluded the design service agreement with Toyota Australia for the Land Cruiser 70 Series. Vivo Power and Toyota Australia will each continue to explore opportunities as part of their commitments to a sustainable future. Tembo has also secured a strategic investment from a sustainable, focused family office investor in the United Arab Emirates with an initial investment of two million pound by the close of March 31st. And in case you've overlooked the fact, Toyota Motor Corporation Australia is a wholly owned subsidiary of Toyota Motor Corporation, which you probably already knew, which is the world's largest car manufacturer. Did you know that? So this company has a deal with the largest car manufacturer to work on their Land Cruiser 70 series. And the last piece of news, which is the fresh catalyst. We too, it's tiny. Vivo Power International confirms date for fiscal year 23 half year results and earnings conference call. They're going to have their conference on uh, February 24th, which is Friday at 8 in the morning, it looks like. So this is a catalyst, folks. We were looking at income. Well, there's not a lot of information there. We haven't got the filing. We need more information about money. And it looks like they're going to be making a lot. So I do believe this is going to be a catalyst. And if they say something sweet, something prime, we could see a nice run off of this chart. Speaking of charts, let's go take a look at it. VVPR, six month, four hour chart. We got a high here of $2.47 and a low in the middle of January of 21 cents. And this is when we looked at it, that blue line. This is the 25th. She had that little bit of run the day before, caught my attention, and then she ran. Look at her go. Had a huge gain here of about 150% and then dropped, but she fell to a new support right here where she went sideways after that day. She's bounced off of that and it looks like she wants to get up over this 50 day SMA. Our volume has fallen hard, got real low, and now looks like it's starting to come back. Speaking of coming back, We've got an imminent crossover right there in our PPO coming back over top of our pink line. We've already had our crossover on the MACD and our RSI is falling at this very moment probably because of the aftermarket activity right there. 20 day, one hour view. All right, this looks good. She jumped off of this low, got way high, too far away from the 200 day SMA, came down so fast she busted through it like a rubber ball in water, goes under the water and then comes back up and sits on the top. That's exactly what looks like is happening right now. She is banging her head on that 200 day SMA. She is determined to get through it. But after so many bangs, she has had a pullback during the aftermarket hours. Our technicals show that things are cooling off, but that is primarily the aftermarket activity. Five day, five minute. Ooh, big drop here from 80 cents down to 50 cents, curved around, got up on top of that 200 day SMA. And look at that 200 day SMA. We got our scoop. She's coming back around. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if this came down to the 200 day SMA. I wouldn't think it would, but it wouldn't surprise me at all, which would be a good buy place for this. Right now, she is hanging on to her 50 day. You can see she is riding on that 50 day. She pulled away from it here, got too far away, came back to it. That's how we know it's home. Got up again, came down, busted through it. And right now, it looks like she is negotiating to stay on her 50 day SMA. Our technicals are very weak. I can't say that they look really, really strong right now, but I'm expecting this to move. I was right the first time, maybe I'll be right the second. Given that this is gonna happen the 24th, we got 10 days before that. 
So anything could happen. She could dip a lot more. She could run. There's no telling. You've got to keep your eye on this chart, folks. I do expect her to come down. I don't know if she'll come all the way down to here, but we got 10 days, so she's not going to just climb, climb, climb. You got to expect a buying opportunity to come into the picture. So watch your charts real careful. Get your support and resistance lines in there. Watch your SMAs. And most importantly on this stock, watch that volume. It is getting strong here. Our SMA is pushing up. She's on top of the 50. Things are looking promising. Now you haven't overlooked the fact that VVPR, that 150% gain, that was found by looking at a warm chart. I got to tell you folks, I have seen much better results looking at warm charts with lingering news than looking at rocket stocks, looking at stocks that have taken huge gains today. Those that have already blown their load, they don't have anything more to give. They're just going to take it back. So hopefully you're learning how to do this. Look at the charts, see if there's volume coming in, see if they're just about ready to go up over a 50 or 200 day SMA, and then go look at the news from the past. Look at their filing. See if they mention a date that's just ahead that we can get in on. These are the sort of stocks you should be playing, folks. Stocks that have potential, not stocks that have already blown all of their potential. Due diligence, it can teach you a lot, but you don't have to get it from just reading words. You can get it from reading charts, too. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.